Welcome back, everyone. Still going strong here in uh, our O <laughs> and, and I O. Uh, still going strong in the series, and already map number one going in favor of dragons after a full fifteen round blinder. And James, big fan of your drink. You a drinker? Yeah, sure. Well, you better get ready for it, because Clubhouse, we're going to a German bar, James. What else could we want? And we'll have to see how both these teams kind of play out. That was really your segue? Yes. Okay. What else do you want me to say about a German bar? Do you like motorcycles, James? Because we're going to a garage. Get revved up. Something like that. Get revved up? Yeah. These motorcycles revved. I think there's a thing there, you know? You just leave the puns to me. You know, you know, I'm just, I'm just disappointed. Don't Unless you hit me with sixty plus puns in Halloween night, I'm not interested. <laughs> we'll see the Capital Band coming out as well from Black Dragons. We'll see MIVR banning the Thermite. Is that the first time we've seen a Thermite band? No, no, no. We saw a Thermite and uh... and uh, Maverick before. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. So definitely going to make things a little bit more defender sided, depending on what the defender bands do intend to be. MIVR taking their sweet time with this one and. Really thinking about what exactly is their reaction here. I'm gonna decide it. I'm gonna guess an echo. Not easy. Pretty not standard. Not a hard one to guess at all. But Black Dragons are gonna be left with their band, of course. Here, between kind of really between a mirror and uh, a maestro. This gonna be the mirror. So pretty standard uh, defense uh -huh. bands. Although that thermite is you don't often see a thermite banner here. Yeah, thermite's like the only kind of odd one there still. It makes sense to ban that. It's yep. not like a crazy ban where like that literally does nothing. That limits now the attacking side to only Maverick and Habana. It's going to be a lot more tricky, I feel, for teams to gain control of cash. But then again, we've seen the kind of Maverick trick where you would just remove an entire reinforced wall. And that kind of acts like a Fermite charge in a sense. I think it's going to be fine still. Uh, the fact that Thatcher's on the board is like, another great thing. So the hatch is downstairs. It means Kai doesn't really have that much of a big say. As if yep. we've seen like a Thatcher Fermite ban, then you're really cooking with gas. Yeah, I suppose that is indeed true. We'll see how Defender things do go down. So we move into round number one. We'll have a look exactly how Black Dragons want to play this. The have gone downstairs first, which... Mm, is this the best site to go to with the current bans? I feel like that Thatcher and Habana both being up, although I suppose you could argue that you'll see most teams rely on a double hard breacher kind of strategy to try and open all this up. We do see the Maverick on the board, however, it might be, and I think that's not going to be the last time we see a Maverick up on the board. We'll have a look how things go down as we move to round number one, but so far from Black Dragons, things looking pretty standard from their lineup. Losing the, uh, the Legion, which really has made his way into quite a few of these church basement defenses. Yeah. Like, holding down blue is very, very easy with the Legion. And even holding down dirt as well. Whenever you look at the basement in general, there is a multitude of ways in that the attackers can utilize. If you just place a goo mine at every entrance, then everything's covered. It gives you that yeah. sound cue where you know if someone's pushing down that side of the map. And just an overall, that like we've talked about before, he's just universal. And every single bomb site, and every single map, he always has a role. Panico's brought a C4 rather than impact, so he's going to be able to impact trick this at all. So the only impacts we have available may be from WAG, but also we do have impacts from GDN. See, Is impact tricking going to be a big thing, though, uh, whenever they only I, have the Habana? I, I honestly think, think so. I honestly think that Clubhouse in general comes quite a lot down to who can impact trick better. Um, not whenever maybe Habana's not there, though, with James. The, the, not, maybe not with the Thermite ban as well, but like think about it this way, right? Habana's basically your only big harbinger here because Maverick is not going to be able to get open too much here. You can open like two hatches, right? So if you're like pushing that church wall or you're pushing uh, the kitchen hatch, those Habanas are going to be worth quite a lot. But generally we see only like the bottom left corner be opened up from main stairs from Habana, which you can't reach yeah. with, a, with a, a trick. And then that just creates sure. an opening. I don't think that for the attack without the Fermite, their priority should not be let's try and open triple wall in church because that push doesn't really exist if you don't have the Fermite. Well, the other thing that does exist here, however, is opening up all of the top of the wall and that is going to allow you to throw a C4 up onto that bot with the main stairs. Yeah, from that's C4 is for, for, yeah. That's probably one he's going to go for. Like, I, how many times have we seen C4 just being tossed over? I think back to what Zeke did with the quad C4. Uh, that was pretty cool to see. I haven't really seen anybody <laughs> kind of uphold that again. Like, nobody's been able to come close. I say you like to remember King. Can he prune through that still, even if it's only with the five? I don't think so. I think you have to get all six. To prune well, there's the Maverick there. Any Maverick can fix it. Uh, see? Yeah, okay. Easy fix. Um, 
Why didn't you just have the Maverick yeah. do this anyway? <laughs> Is it yeah. just wasting the next Kairos there, pretty much? Strange. Mm -hmm. Very strange. But Cyber gonna make his way through here and then go for the pre fires as well where he can. Live could be very, very low HP and he's just gonna get the heck out of there right now. The flashbangs have gone down in heavy amount. BZD could get the kill, putting kill onto Novice, however, and Live slowly gonna be making his way back, but he will get downed and hopefully eliminated soon. Cyber and Bullet both picking up their frags as well. That is a big pick going off the board from Black Dragon City. They've also lost dirt control, so now it has opened up some sort of armory push. So, Black Dragon's on the back foot. 20 seconds to go. No smoke, so no denial with Toxic Babes. Still the C4, though, from Panico, and he has the big old sniper shotgun ready to rock and roll. Two of them now pushing in towards Moto. C4 can toss out, but doesn't land anything. A really strange one that he tried to apply there. The shotgun rattles on through PZD. Another one in there as the shotgun peeks on up, but still control for Church. Diffuser has to come in now. Oh, but he's been shut down from Blue. MIBR, they're out of time, and Black Dragon's, they pull it off somehow. Very, very narrowly pulled off by Black Dragons. I really thought as soon as they got dirt control, it was over for Black Dragons. And I was kind of confused as to why we went for a church push there from MIBR, but they will choose to go through Moto and, of course, onto church. Things didn't end too well for them there. We're going to round number two, and it will be a CCTV and a cash room defense. We we're a little bit more familiar with this defense and how it does work out. I'm more interested to see like how MIBR do this because. I feel like the best way to do this at the moment, especially with the current bans and especially with the Thermite ban, is to just fully Maverick open the CC wall and then send your Habana to open at the top of Garage and to open up Construction. And Club S is really all about opening walls, right? It is, that's like the main thing. With the amount of reinforcements that you need to have, that's why we see hard breach bans be so prevalent in it. And... I kind of think back to like different matchups where we've seen like a multitude of different banning phases, like in terms of attack. Sometimes we see Clubhouse where every single uh, every single hard breacher is still available, and the attackers just have like a field day. We've looked back and we've seen Habana and Fermite both be banned. We've seen Maverick Habana, Maverick Fermite. Uh, Fermite just by himself it is a bit of a strange one, and it's still, again, this cash, it still allows the team to kind of deal with it because you can go for the Maverick trick where you can basically remove a reinforced wall. Uh, Capital, though, I think is like a, a, a necessity for Black Dragons to kind of get that catwalk on lock as quick as they can, and we know how many times like an ACOG, a big heavy up there, can completely shut that around just down to the sheer fragging skill. Yeah, it's interesting there's no need to come out from MIBR to try and shut that whole area down. We'll have a look what kind of push they do want to do here, but it looks like Cyber here yeah, is going to try and make this wall softer, at least part of it, as he begins to do the Maverick work. And we saw this pretty much every single round from the EG and Obey game, and uh, Necrox was doing like absolutely amazing work opening all and so Let's see if Cyber can do something similar. Not a lot happening though for MIBR, but it is expected on a map like Clubhouse. Very slow, very methodical. It takes teams a while to get going and get the drones in, get the site executions, and you kind of work it as like a checklist. You have to try and first of all get the bro breach open, then you move in towards Catwalk, and then you finally get your execute. First blood though actually has been shed by Black Dragons. They get that first opening pick. Navi's gone, air jabs if there are still any left on her. are now gone. Black Dragons. That early aggression will go a long way on a map like Clubhouse. It definitely will, it definitely will. We'll see Cyber just going for that early repel and see what he can do it's just outside the kennels and just try to find some early picks here, but they, they haven't really done too much work and already losing your Nomad. This isn't looking good for MIBR. They're very, very slow to push through here so far, but finally we will see this wall made, made soft. I like the fact that he's opened up the right side of the wall rather than the left side of the wall completely, but he does still have that angle at the top that he can control quite a lot of control there. You know, he can shut down any kind of rotates or anything like that. Hoogzod, speaking about shutting down rotates, will take PZD off the board and even that of the bank account. Does square it back in, but still, they have not taken control off the garage. They need to have Catwalk in their hands if they want to make this push a successful one. Still, Y can eliminate the drones using the evil eye that is set up for him. And even look at just the way that everybody's stationed for Black Dragons. They're ready for the push in. All three of them as a kind of triangle of death, ready to refrag at a moment's notice. Not a lot of cover, though, for Y, so he's literally on his own. 
But MMBR have no interest in going towards them. I really don't get the thought process and why they're taking so long. This is just going to end a disaster, I feel like. There's going to be tears all over the floor because MMBR will be saying, how come we didn't clear Catwalk? Because you guys haven't prioritized it. You've brought no nades. You haven't put any drones towards them. Here you go, you're finally doing it. But with 20 seconds to go, that doesn't leave you with a lot of time. There's a great angle being opened by Wag, despite the fact that so much utility is getting emptied onto him. He's not going to be able to find any kind of frag or get fragged out himself yet. GDN peeking through onto Cash Stairs as well. Should be able to find the frag, and there we go. Hoaxod off the board as Life finds one of his own. Should be able to get another one, but no, gets shut down on the refrag as well. And they just flood into Cyber Blood Dragons will keep them at bay. They take round number two, and these are not good attacks coming up from MIBR. I think there's a massive misplay in their utility usage here. You need to take Catwalk. You cannot push this site without having that half of the map in your control. You can't do it, James. I've talked about this so much. This cache is really basic to attack. So basic. You open up the breach, then you go to Catwalk, you clear out the man using utility, sure you trade some lives, but in the end you should still be sat with a man advantage, having the walls open, ready to go for the simplest plant because you have a massive wall of servers that covers you. So we're going to go to gym and bedroom defense coming up from Blood Dragons. This is obviously the offsite. This is MIBR's round for them to stay in it. If they lose this, it's going to be a rough one. We're in for a quick one. If they lose us, uh, I just don't know what to do from there. You may be saying, oh, but Furmite's gone, Capital's gone, it's defender sided map. No, 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 no. I've seen plenty of teams pull out attacks time and time again with Habana and Maverick. You still get two hard breach. Whenever we see Maverick and the uh, Habana ban, that's when everything get a little bit more defender side of it. Still, there's plenty of stuff in the utility for the for the attackers. You have plenty of stuff there. You still have nades that you can bring. There's still Thatcher on the board. Kai doesn't become that much of an influential operator. You look at the defense, they're all so harnessed. They, they don't have a mirror. They don't have an echo. All they have is a maestro. Again, there's Thatcher on the board. There's your counter. Hmm. So... Round of three and getting underway, we'll have a look at what this gym and bedroom defense will entail for us. This is Blood Dragons' opportunity now, more like it is for MIBLs to get back into the race. This is Blood Dragons' opportunity to just shut that all down. If they can win this defense, they put themselves at a huge advantage. Winning an offsite is no easy task. Blood Dragons are going to try and do it all the same. I still don't think for gym, the way that teams have adapted to it, you look at the kind of setup that Black Dragons have, Castle Barricades are quite the big operator, because it, first of all, makes MIBR waste some utility, and really the only thing they have is going to be some Sophia Impacts, which don't really know if they want to try and use those, because generally we'd want to keep that, as uh, Maverick will try and clear off the wall and make it soft, and you open up just like they did on the on the last one on the cache, and oh, oh. quick peek, but Nobby's reads into that, and PZD gives himself away this time around, so that's a better start now for MIBR. Dragon's trying to take that aggressive approach. It does pay for it. Oh, I like this, though. Look at Panico hunting for more kills in towards the balcony. Wall's been opened, though. Electroclaw's eliminated. And, well, MIBR in much better shape, but I could also see a headshot come in here from Panico. He's just barely missed the man on the balcony. Looking for him, but just out of his grasp. There you go. He's seen the head. Oh, my God. Look for it. You can do this. You can, you've got this. Like Come two on. ships in the night right now from Panico to try and find this frag, but not able to do so just yet. Oh, 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 no. oh no, he missed. Oh, Panico. What a massive mistake from Panico. But regardless of that, we will see just about halfway into the round now. MLBR with a pretty decent lead, but we'll see how the rest of that does work out. You see some sort of aggressive peaking coming out from live as the CC wall does start to get opened up by Cyber. Starting to take out all the banner charges as well. We'll have a look. Sorry, the, uh, the Kaya charge. We'll see how that does progress. So MIBR are going to go for a split push. So also putting pressure, of course, in the main jacuzzi wall, which is going to be their main entry in towards gym to try and go for the plant, but also not allowing the guys over towards uh, cash room to have that much freedom and try and retake the bomb site. Still a lot of pressure towards gym, which is expected, and Black Dragons have to be light on their feet and try and make sure they can dance this tango to the tune of MIBR and their attack. It's still a minute to go. MIBR have really picked up the pace compared to the last time, and this is exactly what we wanted from them. This is expected. This is how you attack a clubhouse, by opening up everything, not giving the, def the defense any angle whatsoever to sit back and relax from. You always have to keep breathing down their neck. 
Oh, the hells continue to do it. Blood Dragons still have a lot of control, but of course that man disadvantage is doing them zero favors alive. Almost picking up a kill for himself there, but never to find anything so far. Hooksort, however, will find Panico, but quite a lot of members from MIVR are very, very low HP right now for this final push. As we get into the last 20 seconds to see what is going on, They'll go for the smokes as well. The counter smokes coming out from GD, and he's still got one more remaining in his back pocket. Life still has a lot of control here, and Black Dragons are just in a commanding lead right now in a 5v3 still. But MIBR just all over the place, and they just don't have any control right now. Life could be pushing through as well, but there we go. Waggis getting one kill as well. Gets another as well into hold down construction. The plant starts to go down from M King, but it gets denied by Live, and Black Dragons will clinch the round, and that has put them in a great lead. Just no control. How have they not won that round? How do Black Dragons keep pulling up just out of nowhere and taking it from what should be a sheer cut round? That was like one of the strongest rounds we've had from MIBR, even in Border as well. Their attacks finally got something on the board there. They got the first pick. They had walls opened up. The defense didn't really have any safety spots, but still... They took like a minute to decide who wants to jump in first. Where was the man who stepped up and said, you know what, guys, I'm going to push in here and start getting some kills, start getting something on the board. We need to see a single player who just takes the bull by the horns, smash it to the ground and says, we're going to win this. I think you just lost that, three in a row. I think a lot of that was lost yes to time, as you said. But I think yes. a lot of it was lost to the fact that they couldn't trade wag in construction. And he had all the control there. That he was able to deny that whole gym push coming through from construction. He was also able to deny their control of construction, so there'd be no refrags coming through from that side. So like that's a whole area of the map and a whole angle that you've just completely denied. So like really well played by from Wag to take that in. I would have liked to see a logistics drop by one person. Because if they had somebody pressuring that side of the map, everybody had their backs turned to that hatch. Everybody in defense were just so worried about denying the access to Jacuzzi Wall. One drop, one guy picks up at least a kill, and that should be it sold. But MAPR just not spreading out. We've seen 15 seconds. All of them are still outside. None of them wanted to jump in. All of a sudden, you start to hear the timer tick down, and they all pile in through one window. They all clump up, and guess what happens? An easy frag fest. Yeah, and also just time. I mean, I feel like if they had a little bit more time, they could have been, been able to easily bring that in because they had a lot more control at the end there. But, yep, the time going down and obviously the defuser getting denied of that plant from MKing. Guying, we'll see how MBR continues to do this, but Flashbang is going to go out. That's going to turn PZD full white, but Wag will pick up the first great kill onto Cyber. That's great, yeah, great. Intriguing. Out there. I'm surprised that he didn't get flashed himself. Yeah, I thought That's so That's a bit too. strange. Maybe he did get flashed, he just, he Which, just that You know smart. what, James? Mystery of the world, we'll never know. Just, you know, whatever happened to Atlantis, that kind of mystery, isn't it? Yeah, basically. Tune in next time, uh, as we'll try and discuss that. Oh, Claymore's are going to go down onto that garage, rotate through the ladder. We'll see how MIBR continue to do for their attack. But losing the Maverick early on, just not a great start. It's hard breacher. Now you're limited to just having the Havana. So you probably will opt for the free hatches and that's about it. And whenever you try and go for like the free hatch pronged attack, I see a lot more teams kind of struggle with it. Defense, uh, whenever they have that upper edge with having the one man advantage, you have to really win your ones. And typically the way Black Dragons have been stationed throughout border in this map, they go for 1v2s. They don't allow the 1v1s to happen. They always double up and have that crossfire. Uh, and I think that's just what single-handedly winning wow, dragons, that they, they look like more of a team than what MIBR do at the moment. Yeah, they definitely do. We're looking into a 4v5 right now, MIBR. Having lost a huge amount of utility, this is looking like a church push right now because they can't do an armory push. They don't have the utility for it. So they're going to try and go for that church side push. Of course, there are multiple C4s available here for Black Dragons. Well, actually, no, I say that. There's only one C4 available, but it is a strong C4. But it's going to be Hugzord who takes live off the board so early on. Nice of Smoke's already down. This is great entry work from MIBR. Let's see if they can continue to make it work. Still got Havana's on the board, of course, from MKing. He should be able to make his work do on church. He's going to start to do that. As Panico playing aggressively. He doesn't have any Nitro Cell remaining. And the jumps are going to go down as well, but Panico almost getting found out isn't going to go down just yet. This is 40 seconds left to go in the clock. MIBR need to start to push. Still Black Dragons holding on by a limb, and the Flash even did stun Nomad, but still has managed to make her way in. No Diffuser, though, being available to try and get the plant down as M-King is still fighting against Legion. Finally, we see some kills being traded out by MIBR, and Black Dragons, they will 
eventually crumble under the pressure, and for the first time, MIBR, they take a round. I don't even understand how they win that, really. Like, they had a lot of info into Church, and I get that, but I feel like there were so many people from Blood Dragons who just missed their shots. Like, we had Panico getting caught out between a drone and then a rock and a hard place in the end, up at the black box. We had the play from the Leashman from Ashwall that could have done a lot of damage there, but then he missed his shots and decided to wipe it with the impact as well. I think we just had a lot of mistakes coming out from Black Dragons in a round that really should have been theirs. So, round number five getting underway. We're going to see another Church and Arsenal room defense coming out from Black Dragons. But overall, things are looking pretty good for them. Even though they kind of threw that round away, they're still in a very commanding lead. Huh? They will go for the church, not opting for the cash. Feels if they can go for the bounce back and get themselves in there. Attack Still MIBR, exact same lineup, nothing really changing for the Black Dragons. Also, similarly, nothing changing. Uh, I feel on that last round, specifically for Dragons, is that whenever you looked at the positioning, it wasn't as crisp and as clean as what we expect from them. The fact that they're still trying to contest triple wall whenever they have no cover whatsoever kind of surprises me. I would like to see them play in towards armory a lot more. If they know that that's where MIVR were, were hunting for is in towards that triple wall, why not just try and hold everybody back in armory and then try and flood in towards church? Because you have a lot of long angles. It was only why with the Maestro really trying to hold on to those. And, I know, perhaps put a lot more emphasis in towards blue. Perhaps we could see a quick rotate up blue. There's options for it. Attackers must locate and defuse the bomb. Uh, yeah, no, there are there are a lot of options here available for maintaining mobility. We'll have a look exactly what Black Dragons want to do here, but pretty much the same idea coming out from them, kind of across the board, same lineup, and MIBR also bringing a very similar lineup. I think that though. Losing that Maverick, it's surprising how little that actually affected them in the end. Again, another slow round. Not much happens. This is the kind of downtime. This is where we can just kind of sit back and just talk. Don't we, James? Just talk stuff. You know, like, uh, what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, yeah, Burek, Burek. I prefer Chavapi. British food, like Chinese. Yeah, like Chinese, British food, nice one. Well, we're just about a minute into the round now. We'll see exactly what MIBR want to do here, but they have a lot of control already. And of course, we don't tend to see too much of a Rome game coming out from uh, any defense, and Black Dragons certainly have been no exception to that whatsoever. But looking at the kind of push that MIB want to do here, they still have a lot of utility up on their board. They start to open a boat hatch, and they've done this efficiently so far as well. Making sure they put that Thatcher down, making sure they can catch out that electrical uh -huh. and stopping these divine charges from getting found out. What should they've done? I like the kind of chunk that you hear whenever uh, electrical heads yeah. hatch. I, I, I really like that sound. We just got down repeat, just a chunk. Mm. I like it. Uh, so going over the other one as well, and another Thatcher grenades. They're really making sure that Electro Claws will not play a part at all, and also opening up dirt once more. So they're not going to go for that triple wall, looks like, James. Instead, they're going to try and opt back to like their round one strategy, which I'm a little bit scared of, because triple wall was like really tough for Dragons to kind of break down, and I'm surprised that they did have issues with it. But still, you're not walking your way in towards the smoke. I would really like this if they would go for an armory push because like having control of dirt they don't is so essential open. to that. But yeah, like if they had kitchen open, this would be so much better, but they just don't. And I don't think this is really the play if you don't have that kitchen area open. Don't think like a dirt push is really doing many favors for you and it will continue to not do so. A cyber is going to take taken off the board already. As live has already used all of his smokes, but 30 seconds left to go on the clock, and that really won't matter too much. Edge up will get detonated, however, into blue. And that's going to be one foul on K9 as well. King Wag is going to go down early on and move it into a 4v3. Zem King finds his opening frag as well, as Dirt is now in his favor. So, lots of control in multiple different angles here from MIBR. Let's see if they can make it happen. As Panico getting very lit up from blue here, as PZ does find Novice. That should be an easy kill from Panico, and this should be the clean from Black Dragons. PZ finds another one. Oh my god! What a shot from PZD. Black Dragons take round number five, and they're in a very, very good position. If they can take this next round, I think they can take the series very easily. <laughs> I, th I think they can start packing their bags, because uh, MIBR just not showing up. I'm really confused why, why they didn't go for that same triple wall push. It seemed to cause a lot of issues with Dragons. 
Dragons are geared up to defend that dirt push. That's where they're positioned. Not so much to kind of defend triple wall. Not bringing a bandit to bandit trick, for example. Typically, you would expect that. I'm actually really surprised that even on the church that dragons didn't take a bandit, knowing there's no fermite, knowing that you don't really have to worry about those things whenever they're wasting EMP grenades on the hatches to begin with. But uh, anywho, we move into the final defensive round for dragons, and they get to go to cash. So don't even have to worry about the gym either. They can go for one which MIBR were really weak on, like mega weak. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the CC is it's not been good because again, well, sorry, no, not again. But we do see nades coming through now in the form of a book from MIBR. But yeah, that was the big issue last time. They never were able to clear Wag out of the rafters. They had no control over that area. They could lay so much utility in that area and Wag would not move out of that area. But we'll have a look what MIB have changed up. I'm glad to see the addition of book into this lineup. It definitely brings a lot to the table. And we'll have a look exactly what they want to do here. But Black Dragons in a very commanding lead. If they can win this round, they put themselves in a really good advantage, but if they lose, it's not the end of the world. Although, could argue that that means they have to step up majorly on their attacks because MIBR gets defense in OT. How are we going to get the OT? I really don't know if we will, though. If it's a 4-2, I can very easily see us going to OT, honestly. It's going to be a tough one because, again, we don't know how well MIBR will be geared up for their defense. And, you know... Black Dragons, they're going to struggle in the attack. Looking at the bands without the Capital, that garage is a real trouble for many teams. And we've already seen that from MIBR. They can't really deal with that. They have brought a nades, though. So Navi's on the buck. That could probably be their way, and I feel, to give them that advantage towards cash. Not a single bit of denial, though. As in, like, no Bandit, no Electro Claws. Very surprised that we didn't see the Kai choice here, because he would have been great for tossing one onto the garage double wall to make sure Habana can't open up that slit to watch the man who, yeah. if he does get pressured in garage, he cannot retreat. He can also impact trick the garage wall as well. So it's a lot more so riskier though, isn't it? it? It is, it is, but you can you can do it, and you, you can make something happen there if you did want to do so, but so far, so good for MIBR. I think they've got the right attitude with their utility as well. Definitely love, again, um, to see the nades being brought. Cyber is low, though. Are they opting for a construction take as well? Are they trying to go for the split, sack off the garage, and kind of use the breach as their garage cover? That could be what they're gearing up for. Whenever I see Novi's rotating and trying to take bedroom, that is what I think they're up for. So going for a different approach. So the whole thing about construction is it's a very narrow room. You're basically running into a lot of crossfire. It, it favors the people who are holding in towards blue a lot more because they have a quick, easy peek behind a reinforced wall. And there's also the box right in the middle of A-bomb. You can sit behind, really nothing can stop you from peeking in and out there. And for the attackers, it doesn't give you a whole lot of rotation potential. And plus, I feel as if it's a lot more C4 prone as well. Because the lounge, if you try and C4 in lounge, it's very open. You can get killed from multiple ways. If you're sitting in stock with a C4, you just have to worry about one door. And very rarely, we see somebody get killed in stock from below. Well, Thatcher's having run out, of course, and they run their course. But live, very, very low HP, but so is Cyber, really. And yeah, you are right, Demo. It looks like they are going to be going for that construction push as well. Just about a minute left to go on the clock, and we will see Panico with the impact trick as well, but no, he's not able to make it happen. As the wall will start to get opened up by Habana Chargers, and Panico, between a rock and a hard place right now, he's going to throw out a Legion Mine, making sure that no one can push his other side. But these are very dangerous positions to run in now. PZD, also he can be below with the C4, ready to deny the plant. Smoke kill though, for GDN, M King, he falls. Still, MIBR trying to put as much pressure, but Panico is in the best position right now to try and hold them at bay. Sees a couple of the ankles from the Sophia, but still nothing lands. And Wyke, essentially, he can hold everything just from construction, but Panico is doing it by himself. And now 1v4 bullet outside of the balcony, taken out. Dragons again. Another dominating round. 5-1, they take the split. James, this, this has to be it. This, this has to be the team joining Liquid. Is this an upset? If Black Dragons win this, I feel like these teams are pretty even, honestly, in on paper at least. I think we can consider it an upset whenever we look at MIBR and what they did to Team 1. And for yes. them not to be able to carry that legacy of what they did to the team who we pitched to take that spot along with Liquid originally, we would expect them to then beat that team. You know, so we beat them, so surely we must be able to beat you. 
But in reality, MIB are not turning up tonight. Yeah, it would seem like it. They seem to be flooding around a little Just bit. Team One's sitting home thinking, we died for this? <laughs> Well, Black Dragons in a very commanding lead so far. Just a couple of rounds away from securing their spot in the OGA LAN in December. Let's see how they are able Defend to do it. Protect your bombs if they're able to do it at all. But they brought a Monty for the very first time this series. I love a Monty picker. I think a Monty picker is a very, very good picker. Um, Legion up on the board though. Smoke up on the board though as well. Yeah, it's risky. It is difficult to push into, but I still think it's the play. It can be a rough one. Uh, I think back to what we kind of see from Montagnas primarily on Clubhouse is pushing down dirt. If anything that we go off is that Smokes love the sit dirt and they can just hold off all the pushes. There's probably a couple of goo mines stacked up in there as well. I don't know if this is going to be the best pickup for them. They're kind of lacking in nades, I would say, or, uh, over anything. Still bringing the Maverick Habana combo expected and Thatcher, of course, to eliminate the Kai charges. I like the pulse, uh, pulse pick, though, from MIBR. Nobis can gain the information if he sits inside of Armory. He can, of course, pulse towards Kitchen, main stairs, and more importantly, he can see how many people stacks up in dirt. Yeah. The, the Pulse pick is really good here from MIBR. That's going to give them a huge amount of info. If he sits down in Armory, he's, he's pushing Church. You can see the who's above him. You can also get a Nitro kill out of it if he chose to. We also got another Nitro on the board, I believe, from Pokesword. I'm assuming he's brought a Nitro. But of course, from Blood Dragons, we'll see. Kind of like top heavy, then down clear. You see someone in secret there. It's like Cyber. Just taking their time. Expected for the basement. Uh, generally, this bomb site just plays out as the attackers take a really long time to set up. So imagine you're studying a very long time oh. for an exam, and uh, well, you've already just fallen this first hurdle. You've tried to study in for your mock up, and you've just lost that one. Yeah, that's a really good early pick coming up from Cyber. Someone we send who does definitely step up to the mark multiple ah. times for MIBL. Let's see if he can continue to do so, but a great opening pick onto PZD. He is going to lose Black Dragon's Therizofia, but that's not a massive utility pick. Of course, it's going to make it a bit harder to burn those ADSs and try and like, take those uh, utility things off the board, but overall, it's not going to matter too much. Other side. Charges should start to go out onto that blue hatch. It looks like Black Dragon's going to get gearing up for a church push through Motor. Taking their time with it. That constant information being added in by Pulse, I think, is the huge thing that MIBR have right now. Being able to see how many people stack up. And well, if Pulse sees that there's like three people outside of like the Moto hatch, he knows it's going to be a church push. That means all of his team can start just gearing up and ready to try and defend that. Have they fully reinforced blue as well? Because that's that's an interesting strategy from them. It's looking very interesting so far. We'll see, Habanches have gone down onto the hatch. They're able to open up that kitchen hatch as well. So lots of crossfires being established here by Black yeah, Dragons to be able to do pieces. something here. But we'll say they're all getting stacked upside of Moto, and we'll see Wag should be the first one to drop here. He has got that extendable shield, but no, it's actually going to be Panico. Extendable shield coming out next to him as well. The barbed wire getting destroyed by Panico here as Wag moves all the way in, setting himself up some crossfires here. Nitros should start to come out. Legion Mines do it down as well as Wag getting lit up. Heavily here. Panico trying to find a way behind him, but Wag getting all the way in, but gets shut down instantly. Nitro could go out from Novice as well. That's going to be a kill onto Panico. Now, Blood Dragons find themselves in a 2v5 to try and bring this in. Live and GDN, it's all down to them. GDN trying to push through onto Moto, but no, he go down. And so, there goes Live as well. MIBR take round number seven almost flawlessly. A good start for their defense. I really hope we don't see another shield from. Uh, from Black Dragons, it just doesn't work. Uh, whenever Legion and Smoke are so prevalent on that bottom floor, it makes no sense bringing that. Perhaps they were expecting the top floor first, and that's why they brought the shield to help them with their garage control, but just I'd rather have a gun that scenario, to be honest, than like a human drone. But anywho, we move now in towards the second bomb site for MIBR. It will be the top floor now, and I feel that this will suit Black Dragons a lot better. They can sanction off, I, I hope, the checklist of open up breach, pushing in towards uh, the catwalk, and then finally going for the plant. They're bringing nades to kind of lead us to believe that they will go for the catwalk. I'm curious to see how they use their Urbana pellets. Will they use them to open up the breach along with probably the Maverick trick where you open it up with a Sophia charge? Or will they try and open up the garage bottom uh, walls, which is something that MIVR didn't do at all? Hmm. 
have a look how that is going to be indeed going down. Cyber going to be reinforcing all of this. We saw something like this very similar during the EGOV match. I'm not sure if they're going to do it again, but I feel like the essence of this was to like, so they opened up the very bottom here so that they would maverick it out and then you can kind of like impact trick and like nitro trick onto it as well. It's kind of a weird thing to do in this scenario given that there's no reason for GDN not to just open up the entire wall. But that would just be part of their uh, whole strategy. We'll see how things go down, but don't forget, like, all Black Dragons need to do is just win two attacks here, and they've 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 won the series. And MIBR still have yet to go to an offside. Alright. MIBR now. Ready to go on their defense. Looking at their lineup. Only real difference, I would say, compared to what Dragons brought was uh, Dragons still brought like a Legion for this bomb site. Instead, it's going to be the Mozzie being brought into the prefix. Just uh, I'd imagine a personal preference pick. We know how strong it can be. Jack of all trades, master of none, and just kind of plays it that way. Uh, those are electrified. Does Wag not know that? Okay, it's just as a perfectly timed fight grade, I'm guessing, though, from Panico. So. Well, it's going to get impact tricked anyway. Oh, so unfortunately. It's not going to matter. Unlock Still, though, that's not like the main priority, though. It should be the breach. That's like where they really want to try and get in. That's a C4 that was tossed and yeah. tried to catch GDM, but he just barely moves out with the radius of that. And we'll begin his breach in towards that left hand wall. Um, left wall over right wall. I'd imagine probably gives you the preference of holding down garage a lot better. Well, right wall allows you to cut off the cross as well if you do intend to go for that default plant. So if you do have that control of garage, you don't necessarily need that left wall open. Have a look what Black Dragons do when it do hit. It looks like they are opening fully up that left wall, but leaving the right wall hard. See how that is going to be playing out. See that he's, he's just missed the spot here. He's going to be able to open up all of this slowly and should be able to make this soft. I'm not sure what's happening right now. This is wasting a lot of time for Black Dragons. We'll see them continue to go down. But still got the Maestro Cam up on the board as well from M King. You should be able to see what is going on. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> He's trying to find GDN, it looks like, on the other side of MRFL. Playing a video game. Oh, wait, well, he is. Well, He's yeah, quite he literally is. playing a video game uh, at the moment. Uh, and he has to try and play it well. And maybe R. A little bit of aggression towards the bedroom side, and it will be a lone buck. Oh. He just gets wall banged by Nobby, but still on the other end of that, Wag eliminates Cyber. That's the Jaeger gone, so it's a quick trade off, but Wag, he's came out a lot of damage from that fight. And 40 seconds to go. Dragons, I don't like this. They don't look as if they have a clear way of getting into the bomb site. Easy, he's going to be holding down where he can as well. Should be opening up a bit of soft destruction here and a bit more sight lines into the site itself. See, Wag, very, very low HP, however, it could be rotating through. It's all down to GDN in terms of planting, and that is going to give you a good indication of where this push is going to be coming from. And it looks like it is going to be mainly a CCTV push. Looks like does pick up that kill into PCD, however, and turns it into a 3v4. GDN trying to push through. Flashbangs are going to go out. The jumping comes through, but no, there goes the Thatcher, and Hugzor just cleans it up as GDN goes down. And MIBR take right number eight, and there we go. Now they're going to have to go to the offsite, though, and this is going to be fine now. This is the decider. If MIBR lose this gym and bedroom and dragons take that, I really don't see MIBR bringing it back in. I really don't see that happening. But now we go into said gym and bedroom. The lineup from MIBR will probably lead us to believe what they'll try and go for. Castle then uh, being brought, but not being accompanied by like a bandit or a kide is a little bit of su surprise. Okay, there goes the Valkyrie. Oh, I'm interested if the six picks come in. Mute is another common one that I'm also kind of used to seeing in this bomb site because it leads us to believe that server will try and be held as heavily as they can. Uh, options, of course, and the dock is really okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. I like, don't know. Where is the hard breach now? I mean, I guess there's Maverick up on the boss. It doesn't really matter that much, but. I kind of would have liked to see some Harbour Chanel here. I guess this I guess this lineup kind of works. Maybe if you're expecting um, like a Monty push to come through again. Well, I would argue that Monty isn't that strong on this particular site. So I, I do like Legion making his way back into this lineup as well. You definitely need a Jaeger here. So yeah, I think like, I'm okay with this lineup from MIB. It is a bit out there, but I think it's, uh, it's okay. The Maestro and Castle combos obviously kind of necessary here. I don't know, because, like, Castle 
and whenever I see him use, you need to combo him with like a bandit or you know Kai try and go for the tricks onto the wall. I do. Whenever Fermite's banned, it doesn't really make a lot of sense though to go for that play. So why would you bring the castle any? What for one specific barricade on connector? to burn utility, right? We were saying about during uh, Black Dragons' defense is they were putting castles down. There's been no sledge coming out from MLBR or from Black Dragons yet. So I think like in terms of just wasting time and wasting utility, it doesn't make sense to bring a castle here. But it's like you're bringing an operator to burn up two impacts from Sophia. It's a bit weird, isn't it? And plus, castle barricades just be punched anyway, can't they? Yeah, but is, that is wasted time in itself, right? So. Well, on well, Jim and Bedroom, it's very small, and we've seen how much time MIBR had in their attacks. You're so, telling me that Black Dragons can't, like, use 15 seconds to bash a castle barricade and all of that? Probably can't. I just, unless you're comboing that to try and protect the bandit, don't bring the castle, bring something else. Bring the mute. Gives you that denial, gives you the C4, stops any drones coming in. Well, we'll have a look at what the plan is here that. exactly, but we'll see. Havan Judges have already decided to go down. That's already like a lot of your hard reach utility already going down, not even to make an entryway really onto server. So it looks like they're going to use that just to cut off that site. Yeah. I'd imagine that they're probably going to go for a split push because Maverick can easily go over Jacuzzi, open it up, uh, make that wall entire drop off, and then uh, an easy buck can rip that open, which looks as if they're doing that at the moment. And honestly, for Black Dragons, I like the fact that they will try and go for a split push because the whole point of this bomb site is you need to make sure the defense can stay as uncomfortable as they can. They, you can never give them any safe spot to sit, which we've seen from Black Dragons. They felt really uncomfortable whenever they defended this bomb site, but still pulled away with some kills down to MIBR and their time management. And look, there's a breaching charge as well from Sophia. So again, Castle Barricades literally do nothing. Well. We'll have a look how that is going to go down, but there we go, Jacuzzi Wall is going to successfully get fully opened up with a bit of that Maverick trick to make the wall soft, and then the book to make the wall destroyed. So, we do see this castle barricade up, however, on that gym door. It looks like Black Dragons are getting stacked up to try and go for this push. And there we go, so a few charges are going to go out, that's going to be able to burn the ADS. Live should be able to get a very easy nade kill out of this. Nade goes through, but no, it will bounce off Island. What? How did that not kill him? That's a badly timed nade. Just missed it. Just by a hair. But still low for Black Dragons. Everybody's alive. But then again, everybody's live for MIBR. They're going to try and Maverick in towards the bathroom and give themselves a sightline. There There's the second nade coming in from live, and it will hit its mark this time around on the Hogsword. That's the smoke on. Another one for live. He's just jumped in. Now they know where M-King is, but he's still holding firm with the LMG, and there's the trade-off. Black Dragons are making this work. The swing in from Bullet has been shut down immediately. And a 1v4 for Cyber to try and clutch. Ten seconds to go. Defuser getting planted, but all guns pointed towards construction. They know where he is. And they're waiting for him. A goo mine goes off, and Cyber knows where to Ooh. look. And we'll catch a banner on oh. again. Catch Thatcher as well, but still two more to go for. Wagon successfully got the diffuser down. And this will have to be some clutch oh, no. if he pulls this off. A 1v1 all of a sudden. PZD, he's constantly being pinged. And he's in such low HP. Oh, and Cyber's pulled off the 1v4. How's he pulled this one, man? How's he done that? I have no idea, Cyber. Oh my god, Cyber is absolutely insane! No way, he just pulled up the 1v4! What a throw Why? from Black Dragons! Why did they all just run at him? It was just one after one after one! I don't get it! Right, granted, Habana coming back, we'll let that one slip. But Thatcher? Thatcher? Thatcher did sprint through into logistics, it wasn't great. And gets hit by the Goo Mine, and then still tries to peek? That was an absolute throw from Blood Dragons. I mean, that round could have just costed them the series. They need wow. to make up for it now. Dragons really need to make up for it. Well, they've got to win one of these core site attacks now if they do want to bring this in. This is not looking good for them whatsoever. Meanwhile, MRBR are looking absolutely flawless during their defenses so far. So do Dragons, though, to be fair to them. Yep. And, and this is now where uh, Dragon slipped up in their defense. And let's see if MMBR will follow through and try and pull it back to 5-5. Or Dragons, they could still take this lead into 6-4. So, we'll have a look exactly what is going to be going down here. How did they lose that, James? How uh, do you throw those? Just oh. Great at baseball. It's though. really, really frustrating. Like, to be fair, right. Yes, I know Cyber clutched that. 
he, he himself probably didn't think he should have clutched that, because you never should. Never should win that. Everything looks so well for Dragon's Head. Everything set up, the perfect aggression being added in, the refrags, the jump-ins, and then just leaving one guy in construction, and they all just ran at him. Really bad plays. Not great, not great. We'll leave that. Well, we'll go to church now and then see if yep. Dragons can try and redeem themselves and it needs to be a big redemption because uh, MIBR, yeah. they're probably flying high. Well, if there's anywhere for you to get redeemed, it will indeed be the church site. Let's see how Black Dragons do want to go for their take here. And again, bringing the Monty into this lineup didn't not work too well for them last time. The Legion and the Smoke combo along with C4s up on the table. There's just so many counters to the Monty being brought here. I kind of hope that he doesn't push through motor this time because that was like just straight into the frying pan kind of situation and he was kind of forced to push very very deep with that and even if his opportunity there was to go deep to sacrifice himself so that his teammates could make their entry that's just not how it worked out he just got eliminated and then his teammates all died anyway so well We'll have a look what Black Dragons want to do here, and they'll begin their slow, sure attack. Still, no real roam game coming up from MIBR. Or real Black Dragons when they win here. Very quick and swift from Dragons to clear out their roamers, and we'll start to move on down and start trying to pressure in with all the utility that they have at their fingertips. And, and that shield it will it come in to big effect. Going up against, again, another Legion and Smoke combination. Probably not. And even C4s from Kaid and Pulse Alight could put an end to him. And still, though, I feel for Dragons, they need to try and find another way of pushing in towards Memorial because they left that triple wall completely reinforced. I'm really surprised why they didn't use an, uh, a set of Apana pellets. Because if you think about where they were pushing, does Kitchen Hatch being open really do anything? Does Blue Hatch open really do anything? No, their full focus is in Moto. Why not then try and open up the wall? Because you would have got two kills from it the last time if you opened it up. Yeah, died the team has opened up that church wall yet. Yeah, really so weird. It is, uh, it is unlucky. I think this dirt push, if it's successful, could start to open up a push into Armory completely. Let's see Blood Dragons have made their way down the main Armory steps. well soft. Yeah. They could open it up with Sophia, and that could be their way in. They have dirt open, but it really comes down to see how Live can win the 1v1s and try and apply that pressure. With 30 seconds to go, they need to be quick. And I feel as if MIBR, they're onto that. They have a suspicion where Dragons will try and come in from. And Well, here comes Monty, walks straight in, met by a Goomine, though. Hugs or toss out an impact to try and catch a while Montagna, but nothing comes off it. Panico now dropping into blue, does not win the 1v1 against the Jaeger. It looks to be the same old miserable story. Four Dragons, they've lost them. Montagna Shield doing absolutely nothing, and MIBR, they have pulled this back to a 5-5, four defenses in a row, and Dragons, you need to start worrying. Oh my god, what is happening right now? Black Dragons have completely thrown this series away in these attacks. I mean, we don't expect them really to win these core sites, okay, that's granted, but that offsite, that's really gotta hurt now, but... Well, we'll see how this can continue to go down as MIBR are going to be pretty happy with the fact that they've just brought back from a 5-1 deficit with four rounds on the trot. We're going to go to CCTV and Cash Room. This has to be a win for Black Dragons. They cannot afford this to go to overtime. Hey, hey we could still be 7-5, James. We could be 7-5. We could still be on for the third match could straight off the rip. But if Black Dragons lose here, I just... You can't take the map at that point. I just don't see it happening at all. But I said that about a 5-1 scoreline, but they've just completely choked it away. It's unfortunate, but we'll see the mute pink going to be coming out from Bullet here as we go to a CCTV and a cash room once again. Might be our with a pretty commanding lead so far. They're looking very, very good to take this map down. Okay. Cash, MIBR will set up the defense. Uh, last time for Dragons, they got caught out thanks to a quick roam pairing uh, from Cyber and Novis. And it was very strange from Dragons because, again, it kind of led me to believe that they didn't have a clear indication of what they wanted to push. That impact trick that came in very early from Hogsword the last time on the Kaid kind of shut down the whole Habana angle that they tried to play with. 
I just don't know why teams can't attack towards the garage and cash. Maybe it's just because I'm so used to seeing it from EU all the time, and they, you know, EU's the master of, of being able to get those strong strategies and play them out so methodically. I'm just used to seeing it all the time. But really, Latam struggling with it surprises me. But then again, we're not playing bank, where we would then kind of see Latam excel where EU wouldn't. It's crazy that we just haven't seen bank at all. We've had, well, potentially we're going to see six maps, but even if we did, we're not going to see any of them be banked. It's the only map that's not in the pool, and we've seen every other map except bank. So, well, we'll have a look at what Black Dragons want to do when they go for their attack. We'll see pretty much the same strategy coming out from them as they open up the left side of the wall here from GDN, Mavericking that all open. And, ooh, we see a roaming Jaeger down in strip. Just opening up the breach, pretty standard. And hopefully this time they will try and put more emphasis on actually taking catwalking. That's just one, more, just one team, James. That's all I asked for to do something. And the wall's still not uh, being completely open. Having a bit of issues there. The top left. I don't think it's fully mavericked out. He, he can fix that. He, he can sort that out. And yeah, he repels up to try and see if he can. I was about to say mend, mend the issue, but he doesn't want to mend. He wants to open it up. Yeah. Well. That's what he done it now, and he has been able to make fully soft. So, still a lot of time here for Black Dragons to be able to Plenty do time. something. And uh, drones are going to go out, and they're going to be able to see what exactly is going to go on. As Book has done his job, Live is going to rotate downstairs instead to see what he can do from the other side. Is he looking at entering towards stock? Looks Possibly. Like it. it makes sense. He has a skeleton key, the vertical angles, and also can provide a bit of cover because there is somebody down a motorcycle and also somebody up above still in Catwalk, and there's Cyber, who's still lurking around the lower portions of the map. Wag will come and try and help them. Cyber, since then, has rotated all the way back up. So I do like this kind of approach uh, from Black Dragons, trying to find another angle to assist with the whole garage kind of things. And well, that one side, which has a new electric club on the other as well, and Live does get that entry onto Hogsword, and this is what they needed. This is what kind of spurs them on, but still have to go for M-King on the Maestro. This is their next step, is to eliminate that man. Let's throw from Panico to get that Thatcher up on the board, but they do need this kill onto M-King, as you said. They need this Raptor's control if they want to make this happen. They're going to try and do that live. Finding another kill, however, Novus going to go down. That is a big pick as well. Both C4s off the, the table, but M-King finds GDN, and he's got an ADS still up. Diffuser as well. That, that was, like, a little bit sketchy there, and they still have no way of clearing him out. They need to get a move on. 15 seconds to go. you still up against C4s. Finally, Live's only man. He said, you know what, guys? I'm sick of this. We're just going to try and win the game right now. 10 seconds to go. Bullet and Cyber have to hold on for dear life. There's a kill for Bullet. The quick sprint around for Panico. He doesn't care. He's just going for the Diffuse. Now, PZD needs to have the cover of a god right now. The 2v2. Diffuser being initiated. Cyber loses that one against Sophia. Another one up to try and bat. Pistol comes in from Panic. Oh, just fall back, bro. You have the diffuser down, but surely PZD has the cover. But knowing that Sophia has him on lock, rotates around in towards the cache, and I think Dragons, they finally broke the curse. They will win an attack, unless Bullet can pull off some master clash of shots, but very well played by PZD. And the factor like Panico, he, he just started running. Live did not want to lose that round whatsoever. He completely just single handedly saved that round. Run, Panico, Dragons. run. Well, that's going to be live with that great 3k on the round to be able to bring it in for Black Dragons as they move to match point and series point as well. If they can take this attack onto CC, they they take the series and they secure their place in Croatia's LAN. So, yeah, they're going to be heading to Croatia if they take this round. But if they don't, I think we're going to map three. Well, we got overtime either way. Uh, so still MIBR. They look so strong. And all of a sudden... Honestly, I think that was a much well-played better round by Dragons that time. You look at MAPR, they were all set up like pretty well. You know, they, they played the time, and just live especially. He was the man that stepped up whenever he needed to, get them pushing on, get them moving, and well, in the end, single-handedly won the round because of his plays that he made. If he's going to do the same again, I don't know. Will MAPR be set up to try and counter the stock take, which they definitely were not expecting one bit. Black Dragons still having a bit of issue, though, with dealing with M-King. That needs to be on lock a lot quicker. Uh, honestly, this wall on cash, realistically, should be open by, like, the two-minute mark. And both teams really struggling with getting that kind of grips to it. 
So, my sure cameras will go down to the top of this garage and uh, we'll have a look exactly what the Rome game does intend here from MIBR. Reloading my ammo. I do like the fact that they do play Hugzod now in the garage area. He did get fragged out very early on last round, but I still think it's a good play. Like, he can impact trick there, he can deny those walls, he can deny that whole garage control. And it's clear that Bat Dragons were all about it, but this time they're all about the construction pushes. Novice is actually going to find the first kill of the round. There goes PCD Live trying to find the refrag, but he goes down and it's a disaster all across the board. And oh no, Flat Dragons really falling the board here. Ah, uh, they tried to go for a sneaky play, and unfortunately for them, They've just basically locked them into overtime. And the MIBR now, they just have to make sure they don't throw a free V5. And hopefully they don't. They shouldn't anyway. The way they've been playing on their clubhouse defense, it's been very precise and very clinical in stages. So this is going to be just two minutes of us just waiting for MIBR to win the round because it's pretty much won by now. And oh, well, Nalvis is making sure it's going to be won. 1v5 for Panico. And yeah, overtime now, James. I mean, I think he can win this. Shut up. From Just Panico. stop talking. He's been a big fragger from Blood Dragon so far. And he's got a lot of time. He's got a lot of utility to work with. He doesn't have Diffuser, though, but it is in a easily recoverable place. He's not winning this, James. Okay, but Cyber what won a 1v4 post plant. Yeah, that's a post plant. This I'm is a him. believer. He's not even in the building, James. I'm a believer, Denner. Well, you're... <laughs> Ah, uh, you have your opinions, James, but just unfortunately. This for also you... allows Black Dragons just to like talk about what they were doing wrong. And yeah, exactly. Just to talk about what the rest <laughs> of the there he goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just that goes, just that's there. Oh, repping the Union Jack. Come on, man. He's getting his points. He loves the Union Jack. He's actually just not even recovering the diffuser either, so. Why would he? Seems he? to have given up. It's not impossible. Yeah, his frags right now. Just looking onto the construction window and see what he can do. 50 seconds left to go on the clock, of course. Seeing exactly what the situation is, he's daring them. Please jump out. Please give me an exit frag. I'm playing for my stats. What's this big thing on the top of the building? Is it like an oil drum? I think it's like a water tower. Is it? I mean, I've used that call up before. I'm pretty sure it's a water Impact tower. Down. There you go. Impacts are going to go out as well. Looks like they should be you know, good to go for a jump out here sooner rather than later. Panico still not at all bothered about the diffuser at all, but he should see that someone did just jump out outside. <laughs> just sitting and, upstairs. Uh, he Panico just... is just not even wanting to contest Honestly, it at all. I, I respect it. He's going to go for the peak. Hugzod is going to be able to see him there. How is Hugzod not dead right now? Panico going to go for another peak as well. Oh! The C4 goes up. He doesn't manage to shoot it, but he doesn't manage to find him either way. He brings out the pistol, goes to the pre fire, but can't find the kill just yet. And now by BR, we'll take the round. Really, they take the round. I never would have thought. I think you just need to believe more. I don't know, what, be what belief system were you using? How do you expect that man to win a 1v5? Getting his frags. And did he? Well, no, but... No, you know, it so, can so, 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 James... It can happen. Who was right? It's not impossible. Though. James, just say who was right. Look, you know, it's not about who's right or wrong. It's De not happening. Demo. Demo set. Go on. We're going to go to Church Asshole. See, he knows now. I'm right. Jack, the round of a he 13. knows I'm right. Of course, MIBR start out in the defense because, of course, this is their map pick, which means Black Dragons got to pick sides, which means MIBR gets to pick OT sides, and they've chosen to go to defense first. We'll see Novice with the sixth pick here onto the pulse. We'll see that Church also room defense coming through. So, Defenders things are looking too good for Black Dragons here because we've had attackers. five defense wins and one attack win on both teams. I would never expected this. I don't think anybody would have expected a 5-1 retake half from MIBR. Dragons, this church, haven't won it at all. MIBR have been on top of their game for it. Uh, uh, Monty being brought both times by Dragons and it just didn't work both times. And I just don't get the reasoning why they brought that specific operator. Again, that smoke and lesion combo being brought in to try and stem that if it is ever six picked. For Dragons though, instead, of, I think they've kind of realized that, yeah, that just doesn't work. We're better bringing some more guns to the table. And, well, they've done that. Honestly, if you look at the setup now from Dragons, it's a lot more standard. I still feel as if they need to kind of have a clear indication of what they want to push. Kitchen Hatch is really tough to get open because impact tricking is a thing. And we haven't seen any team, I don't think, open up Kitchen specifically. And just because impact tricking is a thing, we very rarely see Kitchen takes anyway. 
Did you kind of even open the hatch to begin with? Unless they want to risk Maverick going for it, which is another option that they haven't really opted for. Yeah, that is, uh, that is very true. We'll have a look how things do go down as Black Dragons begin yet another attack for themselves. And things on their attacks have not been too well, but neither is MIBR, but MIBR get those two defenses and they can go to two core sites as well. Blood Dragons really just not looking good here whatsoever to try and bring in the map. But of course, if they do bring in the map, they bring in the series as well. They get invited to Croatia for the OGA LAN in December next month. Just moving through, getting the drones in, making sure nobody is uh, is lurking. And you know, just still for, for Black Dragons, I hope they have a clear way of being able to get in and start causing some ruckus. And Electroclaw does go in, but quickly picks that back up again, knowing that it's not Habana. Instead, it will be the Maverick opening up this hatch, uh, which is, I'm guessing, they're going to keep the Kairoses and they will be on for the triple wall and try and open that up. So the first time that we've seen Black Dragons actually opt for this route. Don't know if it's going to work for them, though, because with only half the time gone, yeah, there's still time there, but they still have to actually make their way down into Moto and then get that wall open and then hunt for the frag. So a lot of things still to check off, and unless they can pull some great gun skill, I just feel as if they're going to hit another wall that MIBR has put up in front of them. So Moto Hatch is going to get opened up easily enough, and Black Dragons are going to begin their main attack here. It's because this is the first time they've attacked the basement, and they've not brought that Monty, as you mentioned. So... Adiuses are going to be going down as well as Black Dragon is going to try and make their way through into blue and get that control. Again, just very, very heavy church pushes come through and it hasn't gone too well for them so far. Let's see if they can make something happen this time. Lush calls are going to be denied as well as Impact Trick is going to be going out, but it's not going to stop the Habana charges going out and getting that control. Oh, there's the C4 being tossed in by Pulse, but nobody's on the main stairs to receive the present that he tried to ship in. Still all five alive, and now we're going to get to the bloodbath off the clubhouse. And this one is going to be fun to try and see how this plays out live. Cooks an aid in towards blue. PZD opens up, and there's another Ooh. one. Black Dragons finally could try and break the curse that they've been having with this church. Still low for MIBR. There's hope, but not anymore. As Panico is eliminated Novis, and that's a 2v5 retake. There's one back, though, for MIBR, and Cyber sprays on in, eliminates one on blue, and he's in the perfect position. He can stop the plant, and yes, he does. A 2v2 Cyber. He is off his head. 1v2 now, and Cyber's still going no in strong. Way. Oh, my word. This must Man is a monster. Step away, Nask. We found the new Terminator. Oh my god. Cyro with two almost impossible clutches now coming out. Just keeping MIBR desperately in this match. They're going to go to match in series. Well, match point for MIBR, but Black Dragons. Oh my god. A 2v5. What a throw from them and yet again. How many kills is he on? Can we have a look at the scoreboard, please? How many kills? Cyber is 12. Not that many, actually. <laughs> He's only really stepped up in the clutch moments, uh, but still, that's when it counts. Whenever you can make those unwinnable dreams become a reality. And the MIPR, they will now go on the attack, so we expect Black Dragons to take this defense because they're pretty damn good at that also. We haven't seen them on the defense for quite a while. And again, I think it's gonna, gonna, gonna come down to the final round to see who really breaks it. Oh, this is so good. This is really good. good. Well, MIBR has had limited success on this downstairs attack. Let's have a look and see how things are going to go down. But Blood Giants, this is their opportunity to desperately stop throwing and now gain that momentum back. This is a very kind of like momentum-based region. This is such a disaster for Black Dragons. So they had this map and this series in the power of their hands and twice now they've let it escape. They need to win this round to keep themselves in the running here. But even if they do, they now need to attack CC or Jim. Just, it's not good. It's not oh. looking good at all. Black Dragon's being caught up in a tsunami, and uh, just Cyber, he's surfing on top of that. So, Dragons, defense. Just make sure you don't choke this, because we want to keep seeing more of this matchup, and we want to see all, all 15 rounds. We have to see it. Uh, MIBR, though, they could easily just crack this case wide open and go ahead and take themselves uh, an attacking win, which we've only seen one of those on. And, well, it was on the church. This bomb site was the only one that they, they take, and 
Wonder if they can recreate that magic. And still it was a 2-1 uh, in terms of two defender-sided wins for uh, the church and then one attacker-sided wins. So only one for MIBR. Oh, God. This is not looking good at all for Black Dragons. They can definitely win this round, however... MIBR has had very limited success in this basement attack. PZD, however, already taken a decent amount of damage as he's been damaged up onto blue. Please put some ADSs down for himself. He's also got a trusty bit of Maestro Cam here. He's going to do a bit of work for him, of course, as well. And Panico should be able to open up a little bit of an angle for himself to help him out. So some very early aggression coming out from MIBR all of a sudden. Two drones right next to each other for Hexos. Taking their time, as always, this is what we expect on the attackers for Clubhouse specifically. Just getting rid of the Electro Claws that's still lurking around. And well, now for MIBR, they have to think about where they want to go from. It feels if both teams, uh, probably apart from Dragons there in that last round, neither of them had a real clear path they wanted to walk down and really put a pressure on one specific bomb site. But still just playing around with the hatches, seeing what options they can have. PZD taking a bit of damage, though, as he tried to peek in towards blue and has been sent back down, though, as Sophia is still holding firm. I wonder if MIBR will try and pressure blue like they've done previously, but I feel as if Church is going to be on the table, James, because they have opened up the hatch, they're droning it now, and I wonder if they, just like MIBR, or just like Dragons did, will they open up the triple wall? We'll definitely have a look at how they want to do this. Moto drop does come through from Cyber. Yeah, able to get quite a lot of control here. Flashbangs are going to go through onto the back of the church wall, and Cyber is going to start to open it all up. Smokes have gone out as well as Kaya charges as well, but that shouldn't matter too much coming through here for Cyber to get, to get this control. Smokes continues to go out as well as Live Mix, the play in the century, and takes Cyber off the board before he can do any real damage. That is a good push from him indeed coming out as... See, impacts are going to go out as well, but M King does find that kill onto live and brings it into a 4v4. But only 15 seconds left to go on the clock. Black Dragons still holding strong, but MIBR definitely need to start to make their push work through Moto. We'll see Novice is the first one to make an entry, but no, he's going to go down as Novice does find one, but it's a complete cleanup from Black Dragons. They keep themselves in it and they'll move to matching a series point once again. But it's all come down to this. Where do they think you're like, CC or Jim? Because Jim's actually been more successful for him, be are. I still think it has to be CC, it has to be Cash. I just think it has to be. Um, overall, I think for Dragons, the fact that that is the only bomb site they've won will probably give them a little bit of confidence. But I don't know if it's going to be a big lot, because even we've seen that. Uh, the defense that MIBR did break through, they didn't even win that one either. So it is very still up in the air, and it's there for the grabbing. It's there for any of them. It all depends on the first pick. I think the first blood will decide this. And if the first blood's on the cyber, that's definitely decided it. Live's definitely been stepping up to the mark here. That's going to be the big battle, dragons. I feel. We can definitely see a live cyber battle right in the first minute. I feel as if that may be the case. Oh. What is this? Different pick now. The Jackal pick coming out. Do they think that maybe it's been a gym pick coming out? Because... And bomb. Uh, um, but there's no castle, though, so you wouldn't really but, No, no, there that. was a castle and then sixth picked onto the mute. So maybe it was like they were looking at the lineup and thinking maybe it could be a gym. I mean, I think, honestly, there is a potential for a gym well, pick here for Mount Beyond. Well, I mean, you look at dragons, they get the Jackal and that gives them smokes which could be something that yeah. they were kind of missing. There wasn't, yeah. like, I don't but think... It's like, Live is doing such a good job on the book. But now you give him a C7E, though. So that's equally another fragging gun that we know he can win gunfights with. And perhaps if they're having issues with player like Cyber, who we know, they have roam game potential even on this top floor. That could also help them. So I it's not a bad pick any way you look at it. But still, for me, M King is the man they need to get rid of. He's been the real problem. The fact he can sit up here and stem any attack for Garage, can give that information, and stop the push-in from the breach. He's the guy they need to kill. He's the man. He's the king. M King is the king, I think. No, well, actually, the real king is uh, Mr. Elvish Presley. Right. Get it right. Well, we're getting into round number 15 here. All What's wrong? You're not a fan again. of Elvis. What's Just wrong? Like... No, I'm a fan of Elvis. Bit of gel and Elvish Rock. No, I only laugh because... Now we've seen two maps in a row. Both go to maximum oh overtime my already. Word. A very early night you're going to be coming out from MIBR, but not able to find any frag on the board just yet. That's crazy. Just another C4 toss at them like last time. And just like last time, they will open up using the Manfrick trick to try and drop that reinforcement. 
in total. Still just working on it. And yeah, that will be successful. Just has to drill the hole right across, and that's an easy wall being opened up. So for Black Dragons, one of them live positioned over towards logistics. Finds Mozzie. I don't think that's the man he's looking for. They're looking for Jaeger. They're looking for Cyber. Because if they can eliminate him, that frees up so much space. Well, Maverick King is going to be good done. Yeah, it's Black Dragons. Do you manage to get open a decent amount of this wall? But yeah, you are right, Devin. It looks like the Jackal hasn't managed to find the man that he's looking for just yet. Where is Sophia? To open this up, which is going to no, shoot so, out. Yeah, Sophia is also shooting that out. They want to try and keep the lifelines, I think, for okay. Maestro cameras. For Maestro cameras. Okay, that's smart. That's smart. And also, that that impact could like I don't know if if M King's on really low HP and like the end game, that could also just take him out. Yeah. So that's like good. another option. So I don't know. Uh, the fact that that wall is like a different kind of wall where you can shoot it out. It doesn't have like the the massive chunks of wood going up and down it. Uh, Black Dragons also split push, looking to try and enter in towards construction. But there is still rumors though for MIBR and they have to worry about that. Well, not only rumors towards their side of the map, but still downstairs. Cyber is back on site, which was the man they were looking for the whole time. So 50 seconds, James, still up in the air. All five players alive. Havana used the next Kairos to try and open up, but there's a mute camera stopping that. Do they have a faction right? Do they have a way of getting rid of that? I don't know if they do. Well, PZG could shoot it from his position. You see I'm the sure man! That's a good idea, but Novice is going to get a kill. Hugs off, figuring this is one off of himself as well. And Black Dragons are not looking good in this so far. PZD does, however, find a refrag. This is not looking good at all. Black Dragons are really falling apart here so far. And we get into the final 20 seconds. Wag trying to push up onto the door as well. Panico managed to find his way into sight, however, to try and get some kills up on the board. He just find one, but can he find two? No, he can't. Cyber takes down Wag. It's all Panico and PZD. There goes PZD. And Panico is the last one remaining, but no, not able to find it. And MIBR will take the second map. Also, 8 to 7. And we're going to be going to Villa. Oh, so. Potential 30 rounds between two maps. We've seen all 30 rounds, and we could potentially have another 15 to round off the night. One more map to go to see who gets to go to LAN. Keep with us, because we'll be here, we'll be with you, we'll be back after the break.
predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight. Everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.